Good morning, everybody. It's actually a morning and I'm starting this vlog. It's sort of a vlog, but kind of like a hybrid of a talking, sitting down video and a vlog. Because in my last video, I asked you guys if you wanted me to talk about all the beauty treatments that I do, from what I ask when I go to hairdresser, manicure, uh, pedicure, whatever, you know, whatever you want to know, what body treatments I have done, or I do, uh, what diet I'm on, uh, everything. Like, I want to talk about every single beauty-related thing in this video um, that comes to kind of like a maintenance, you know? Summer is coming. I think in three months' time, Europe should be kind of in dresses, or is it two months? Which is enough time for you to do anything you want. Like, three months' time are more than enough to kind of like, you know, get things together, start going, and feel great for the summer season. Before I start this video, I wanted to say that when it comes to like, I don't know, hair removal, uh, hair coloring, um, getting your nails done, none of these things are essential. I don't think like anybody, I'm not one of those girls that think that everybody should have like a hair free arms or legs or underarms, like you do what Ever you believe in whatever makes you happy i think that the standard of beauty is getting so high on social media and is getting so out of like kind of normal limits that people think that this is how they have to look which is absolutely not i like to kind of um i like to look after myself ever since i was a child i looked at my mom going to these treatments, looking after herself, um, getting her nails done, getting her hair done. You know, I, even as a child, I used to spend a lot of time at the hairdressers. So I think that you should just do whatever you want and whatever you feel like, and no one else should tell you that your hair should look better or your, your legs should be shaved because you can do whatever you want to do. Also, us women and men, we're under so much pressure nowadays. We have pressure from all the sides to be, I don't know, a good partner, a good uh, student or a working person, to be like successful, to be smart, to be um, so many things, like a good parent, that also looking good shouldn't be a pressure that you should be on unless you want to put yourself under that pressure. So that's my kind of like, a, Thing that I wanted to share before I start this video. So I think I'm gonna divide this video in face treatments, body treatments, hair treatments, and miscellaneous. I think that could work because um, that way I won't skip anything. So since I want to also show you some things that I do, I have hydrofacial once a month and I'm not gonna have it during this week because I just had it last week. So I will just insert when I talk about it, like snippets of when I had it done, if that makes sense. But some things I will take you with me. Like today I have a few treatments that I will bring you with me. By the way, I bit my lip. So that's quite unfortunate. There, can you see? So please don't stare at it all the time. Um, and now I'm biting the other side, can you see? I used to have that same thing with the cuticles, but now that I'm professionally getting my nails done kind of like frequently, I stop doing it because I get embarrassed when I go to the nail place and they see how much I've bitten my cuticles and it's not a cute look. Let's start with the skincare. Skin is very important, it's our largest organ. And I think that no matter what makeup you have, how good you are at makeup, I think nothing is as important as looking after your skin. Unfortunately, there are people who have like really serious conditions with their skin. And I think when it comes to that, if you are considering like, you know, if you have acne or if you have serious conditions on your skin, you should speak to dermatologists. Those people are experts. They're amazing. They will find you a kind of cure that will find you help, a treatment that will really help your skin. But talking about everybody else, I think skin is something that I never really even thought about. It's important before because I always had kind of good skin. And that's even worse because when you have kind of good skin, you think that you don't really need to do anything special to it to make it look even better because you're like blessed with good skin. So let's go and sit on the sofa just to all get really comfortable. 
I'm gonna try and find a clip of kind of what my skin looked like if I can like five six years ago it was never problematic it was always a relatively good skin but I have to say that elasticity of my skin was never really good and I have mixed skin so I have quite dry cheeks but then I would have oily t-zone so it was always like difficult to find the right products and i didn't really understand how to you know do that and then when i would get a spot i would press it and i would press another one and then i would get a hyperpigmentation on that spot because i am skin type 3 which means i have more pigment i'm a little bit i say darker and then people get upset but if you compare my pigmentation to someone else's pigmentation i'm more likely to pigment my skin was never really something that i was happy going around with with no foundation until the last few years when i love my skin i can go around without makeup i'm so happy without makeup i decided to start this vlog without makeup because i thought that that would probably be the most helpful for you to see so you can see there is still some like pigmentation here and there but i mean i come back from holidays in january or in, yeah in january and considering what i'm working with i'm so happy with my skin really really happy and i think there's a lot of things first of all is skincare is the most important thing knowing of course which skincare to use and you guys know i use biologic research products so i told you that elasticity of my skin was not the greatest which you could see in like a tiny little fine lines but not the ones that you can kind of like fix with botox and talking about botox i know that every time i speak about skincare or anything to do with face people are like oh you talk about skincare but you do so many fillers and everything and blah 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 well actually guess what like even if you do botox and fillers your skin is not gonna look better if skin is not good so if you have hyperpigmentation or if you have enlarged pores or if you have a problem with the uh, sebum production if you have acne botox and fillers are not gonna help so skincare is very important and botox does not give you glowing skin you know like you need to work on the skin glow comes from healthy young cells on the surface so for me what really helps with the glow is doing the chemical peeling but not the strong one i just use my lotion p40 uh, w which is the weakest one of the biologic research that really helps me keep the glow there are so many lotions out there with uh, glycolic acid lactic acid uh, all possible acids there are that will help you maintain the glow um that's one thing that i think like always kind of gives me that one treatment that i frequently have done and i say frequently but i mean once a month is the hydrofacial now i have been raving about this for the past two months because hydrofacial is something that i've discovered and i couldn't really understand how can it affect my skin so much wow the glow is insane yeah. i love a good glow look guys my skin it looks and it feels great yeah. it feels kind of curly like baby skin <laughs> exactly I go to the New Age Center where we're actually heading today for a different treatment and there I get the hydrofacial done once a month. So what they do is like they put a liquid on it and then they use this little kind of vacuum tube with which they clean all of your pores. And I would say that my skin is prone to blackheads on the nose and on the chin. I honestly have the smoothest skin right now. I don't know if you can tell, but it's all really, really smooth. Like it feels like there are no pores like there's nothing because they suck everything in and the lady said that actually in my pores there's a lot of pollution because in paris there is a lot of pollution which made me feel so disgusted like our skin takes up the pollution i mean that's just gross hydrofacial is number one i also every like three months go for a biologic research facial as well such a beautiful space for the treatment really enjoying it here we will be checking different um kind of measurements of my skin like i don't know like sebum elasticity um hydration etc so 71 uh, is the moisture absolutely the so what it means here is we don't have the much dead skin cells on top of the skin as mm -hmm. well i'm just in this beautiful room for um the treatments there in the corner where there's a computer we've just done all the tests for my skin the elasticity levels the hydration levels the sebum levels basically like 
pretty much everything everything was more or less normal so maybe like sebum was like a little bit lower on my cheeks I think um, hydration levels were fine like more or less things were okay but we're still gonna work on like some of my concerns which are like pigmentation so you can see some of the on the forehead and just gonna get like a nice little uh, routine so I'm very excited for my first facial after the lockdown At Biologique Recherche, I really love going to the facials because they actually analyze my skin. And then they told me, okay, girl, you need to use the collagen on your skin. You need to use salicylic acid on your T-zone because you get an occasional breakout and a blackhead on your T-zone. You need to use Elastan Serum, which actually helps with diminishing fine lines because I have such a strong mimic of my face. I try not to move my face as much because I used to move especially like this part and this part so much to the point where you know like since especially since my bite is not perfect my jawline would move because of such intense mimic also because the muscles on one side of the face are stronger than on the other side of the face it's a whole science and it doesn't bother me but i know it bothers some of the people that are like oh my god i get so distracted by watching your face how much it moves and i don't want to distract you i just kind of you know and myself but one thing that is important is i think to kind of understand exactly your skin type your skin concerns to use what you need so elastans helped me a lot the masks that they recommended me at biology research have helped me a lot the under eye cream as well and those are the sort of things that i get done when it comes to under eye i do not have dark under eyes as you can see like maybe a little bit here on the inner corner but generally i don't really have dark under eyes and i don't have the sack that kind of creates you know under eye i have something here wait let's see how i can show you can you see that bump there now some people think it's a misplaced filler which i get of course all the time however that is just a consequence of infantile hemangioma and i will insert the picture as well when i was a baby i had a really big one there and then when my parents took me to the doctors the doctor said actually um, don't do anything about it if it really bothers her once she's like older if it doesn't go away and it bothers her she can re surgically remove it however by the time i was seven i think it was completely gone except the little sack so i actually cannot have an under eye filler i mean i don't need it anyway because i don't have the indentation but i actually cannot have an under eye filler because that sack inside is very deep and hollow so it gets filled up and um, the filler migrates there because it's not you cannot spread it evenly under the eye another like skin concern that i have is a very strong strong so strong zygom zygomatic ligament over here people always say like oh my god tomorrow you have like so many cheek fillers like i mean i would pay pay to have someone come and inspect and certify my cheeks and what's in there because i have such a strong cheek muscle this is incredible like look at this it's all around like most people when i go to see doctors they say like that i should have a cheek filler here because i have very hollow but i have such big cheeks that i'm always like no please don't because i can insert some pictures of my childhood as well so that you can see they used to call me like they used to grab my cheeks in school and say like oh my god girl your cheeks also when i would have a cheek filler which of course i have tried before on doctor's recommendation it this didn't work for me because i have such a strong zygomatic uh, ligament here that i like this kind of like it's very difficult you can see the ligament there so it's very difficult to control well the, where the filler goes and this is like gets even more pronounced however what i do get done on my face is botox i do get botox to kind of have the like uh, forehead a little bit more mobilized because again i have such strong face mimics when i was at university i used to work at the uh, abercrombie and fitch and at hollister and i'll never forget my manager used to tell me like tamara the faces you make nobody makes these faces like you make such strong like strong kind of facial uh, expressions that this is like crazy you know literally like i live for 
expression, you know? So I move my face so much to the point where even when I have Botox done, it does not last very long because I have baby Botox done and also because I move the face so much that I need to actually stop it from moving so much. When it comes to my lips, you guys already know, I've had my lips done in the past, I don't do them anymore, I don't think that's the look I wanna go for anymore, I have dissolved my lip filler in 2019 and that's it, that's what it is. I know people say like, oh, you had a very poorly done job because you cannot close your mouth properly, blah, blah, blah. I cannot close my jaw perfectly because I had so many issues in the past which i have kind of fixed and the truth is that it is kind of a thing i understand that some people can think like why does your jaw close improperly but i mean would you ask someone why is your leg shorter than the other leg i think it's kind of it's not really much i can do about it you know it's not something that you choose so or something that i want to have so that is what it is Oh, one other treatment that I have done, but I go to Amsterdam uh, to my doctor, Dr. Yanni, who is like incredible. So like he's the one that does my face, <laughs> uh, like injectables. I don't actually have injectables done more than once a year because it's quite difficult to go to Amsterdam. Like you cannot just go you know, hop off, especially not during COVID. Probably before COVID was much easier. Um, but c'est la vie. Um, so when I go to him, he really looks at my face and he tells me like, for example, like, you know what I need. And he's actually worked on reducing the appearance of zygomatic ligament. What he does is like, it's art. He's not just a, you know, a doctor that kind of tells you like, oh, you know, like you need this or you need that. He really, really inspects your face. And he also did this orthotherapy on me, which at first, I didn't really notice any results, but after like three months, I woke up one day and I was like, oh my God, he injects another thing, which is like a solution. Uh, it's not like a filler or Botox or anything like that. It is a solution that boosts collagen production of your skin. It's called Radiase, I believe. I'm pronouncing it well. And he uses Radiase to uh, help boost the natural collagen production. So it's a non-invasive kind. It's not a filler. It's not a Botox, but he uses this. And I really believe in it because it helps like lift this part of the skin without like in a natural way by the natural collagen production. I think that with that I have covered it all. There's one more thing that I really believe in and that's an LED therapy. Now I have my own Dr. Dennis Gross LED mask. I will show it to you in a second and I will link it below for you guys to check out uh, because I think it's really good for occasional spots, for tightening skin, for the glowy appearance. I use it every night pretty much and I really, really, really love it. I love it. I love even the feeling of looking up for myself. So those are all the skin and the face treatments that I have done besides the roller, of course. So I bought and I vlogged about it. This new roller recently that I'm so impressed about. I've been using it especially on my jawline and I feel like my neckline and my jawline is more defined. I also use it up here by massaging and lifting this up. I think face gym is very important and doing like little you know, massage workouts for your face is very important. So I will show you now the LED mask and the roller. Okay, so this is the roller. It doesn't look like anything in particular. I don't even know what brand is it from, but it's re really cool because the way you roll, it just keeps creating more narrow and narrow space here. I apply moistri moisturizer first, and then I give myself a nice little massage. I think this is really incredible because it the uh, puffs the face as well. And over here we have my face mask. It always lives um, next to my um, bed. So it has three different options. Red, blue, and combination of red and blue. Red is like anti-wrinkle, glow, tightening. Blue is anti-acne. And yeah, this is what it looks like. I know these can be quite pricey. I think they're worth the money because they actually are like at home salon treatment and that's what you need during covid times you know you need the at home salon kind of treatment since it lives next to my bed people always think it's some kind of weird sexual thing but it really is just a face mask so that is it about skin of course as always there will be people who are gonna say like oh but 
why don't you talk about the chin implant I mean what chin implant guys I have such a pointy chin like that do you really think I want to have such a pointy chin in my life this is kind of how it's always been and the people who say like when I even say it like come on like be serious of course I don't have a chin implant or whatever people nowadays make up you know I always think that you know people who say like oh she's lying about it of course she has a chin implant or whatever like cheek fillers blah blah I I always think that someone must have really lied to these people so badly in their life that they think that everybody who says whatever is lying. Being fit is very important for me and having a healthy body. So it's something that I wanted to address. I um, have spoken about my diet before. I stick to intermittent fasting for, I believe, three years now. I don't always stick to it. It's not like a rule kind of written in the stone, you know, it's it's a, it's a matter of lifestyle. So I would say out of 365 days a year, I'm intermittently fasting 280 days, majority of them, that's the point. And of course I have dinner with friends, of course I would sometimes indulge on holidays, I'm like, who cares, you know? But what matters is that because of the majority of days I am intermittently fasting, my body does look better and i don't want to like repeat again the video that i've done so i will insert it here you will get to see the video about my diet and how i lost 10 kilos with it but just losing weight is not enough you need to keep fit i'm someone who really likes to have a bit of an ab a bit of a i like to kind of you know have tight legs i like to not have any cellulite so this is what i do on the topic of cellulite, I would say that I'm pretty blessed because I don't really have cellulite. That is thanks to my parents. Thanks mom, thanks dad. Same with the hair. Thick hair, thanks mom, thanks dad. My mother doesn't have cellulite. Nobody in my family has cellulite, but I would, I would say like we don't have it 90%. If I'm eating very badly and I'm not moving, I'm sitting most of the time, when I press my skin, I would see some. So it's not like I 100% don't have it, but I would say that I 90% don't have it. Even though I drink a lot of Diet Coke, I don't really have a lot of, or mostly cellulite. Like I went for a treatment last week, which we are also having today with the Alma machine. Um, I will tell you when we get there. And that machine is actually also for cellulite. So when they did an inspection of my body, they said, wow, like, we're not gonna treat you for cellulite because it's not there's no point but i have a lot of stretch marks i will try and somehow insert the clip i have so many stretch marks i even have stretch marks on my knees from the growth i have stretch marks all the way on my ass i even have i think a stretch mark somewhere here on the back because i grew very fast so that happened and the stretch marks used to bother me so I remember being so embarrassed of them. I remember when I started blogging, I used to Photoshop my stretch marks out, like on my knees, because I was so embarrassed. And even today, people would ask me on the knees, like, what is that? What scar is that? You have a surgery? Because they don't recognize that the stretch mark should be or could be on the knee. However, I do not even notice my stretch marks anymore. Like I completely forgot that I have them unless when someone asks me. I don't know, I somehow learned to live with them. So now they're telling me, oh, this treatment can also help the stretch marks. And I'm like, okay, let's see. I've only had one so far, but I'm not too fast. I was also like, a few years ago, someone told me that they have a treatment that can help with stretch marks. But the reason why I'm doing the Alma machine is because it helps lift the back area. So they told me that the results are pretty incredible and so many of my friends who have already done and used the machine are telling me that it's incredible. I think that it would make sense that at some point of this video I insert a picture of me in a bikini so that you can see at what stage is my body right now. So I'm doing that combined with Tesla Former. I've had four sessions of Tesla now and I'm starting to see some abs, okay? Can you see some abs as well or is it just me? Because I think I can see some. I do work out. I work out twice a week, very, very moderate, like mildly. Like 45 minute little kind of Pilates class or Zumba, depends on what I feel like. I walk a lot. I walk every single day, at least five to 10 kilometers I walk. 
but I don't really go to the gym. I mean, it's COVID. I don't even think gyms are open. I don't do anything like that. So for me, Tesla is amazing because I use it on my abs, on my glutes and on the lower back. My lower back or my back in general is so weak, which is why my posture is so bad, but it's something that I'm working on. So it is a big issue. Again, when I was a child, I had to go to physio for that, but hopefully there'll be time to improve it. So for my body, I use Tesla former and I use the Alma machine, which by using the heat and electromagnetic impulses, it really helps lift, metabolize, get rid of stretch, stretch marks, it can get rid of cellulite and it improves the texture of the skin. Today we're going to the treatment and I will, sh I will take you with me. But before then, because I'm doing my Tesla treatment there and I'm having my Alma treatment there, I'm gonna make myself a protein shake because we need it. I'm at the moment taking this protein because it contains also, I think, spirulina. So it's a pea protein and hemp protein and it contains moringa, spirulina and alfalfa. And that's what I'm going to have now. I mix it with one frozen banana. It's here. This is just for the taste. I mix it with uh, flaxseed. This is flaxseed, almonds, Brazilian nuts. This really helps the metabolism and stuff like that. And um, coconut milk. So let's do that. One very important thing that I forgot to mention about the mornings for my body and metabolism. Every morning I take two probiotics. I'm having the superbiotics from Routine. Here you can see what it looks like. They actually are like really kind of helping me also like feel great, especially because I suffer with IBS. So this helps the digestion. Okay guys, I wanted to show you the machine because I was trying to remember what it is called. It's called Alma Accent Prime. And we use first this part here and then we use this part. So this one is like really hot and then this one's kind of massaging. I usually lie on this bed here and then they do either the back of my legs, but today we're also doing my waist. My breakfast arrived, uh, it's like another day, but I realized that I promised that I will show you kind of current results with Tesla former, so I put on a bikini in order to do that. So, um, as you can see, I'm noticing the most results on the stomach. So I can see much more definition also on the abs, especially over here and on these two lines. When I, where I use Accent Prime Machine is on this area here and on the upper hamstrings here. Now, I also said that I will show you my search marks because I think it's very important to raise awareness about them and to actually um, make people understand that it's fine to have different things on their bodies. As long as you're healthy, that's the most important thing. As I said, over here is the main area of concern when it comes to that. I'm sorry that I have to have like your face kind of but in order to see them i have them coming like this way and this way so it's all over and then also on the other side of course also here i think this leg is where they're the most prominent as you can see people often mistake them for some kind of scars these are so far my results when it comes to the tesla former you can see that i think like i have more pronounced abs than i've had before the the thing is that I never really had this area of fat. This is kind of usually my problem zone, which I think I'm like dealing with pretty well. I think it's very important to show that because I want also people to understand that having something like that on your body is absolutely fine. And what matters the most is that your body is functioning well and that you are healthy. And that's so much more important than an appearance kind of thing. So... Yeah, I think I need to work a little bit more on the booty because there's still some work to do, but um, that's just an aesthetic kind of thing. Everything else is... Okay, guys, I thought this was the time for me to continue this vlog because there's so much to share and I feel like 
the video will be like five hours long because there's so much I want to share, but it's quite difficult to organize all the different things in um, one video. So I will try my best. I just received a DM asking me, well, I've received many DMs because I have actually shared a little bit about like my hair, just the pictures. And I'm getting so many questions like, what is the hair dye that you're using? What exactly did your hairdresser do? How did he do it? And it's quite difficult actually to answer that question because I'm not a hairdresser. And I don't know about you guys, but when I go to hairdresser, I don't actually ask about the process. I do my thing and I like when everybody does their job, you know? So I don't ask like, okay, how many percentage of the dye do you put? What is the color of the dye that you put? Uh, how long do you keep it on? I don't actually ask those questions because I just let people do their job. I think that's always the best way. And... I'm very, very easy when it comes to hairdressers. I don't demand a lot. I know what I want when it comes to cut. I always ask for a straight cut. I have um, very thick hair and it's very curly. So for me, when I have layers, the shorter layers would really like fly because the hair is thick and it's curly, but it's not heavy. So it doesn't sit on the face. It like flies up and I get this crazy volume, which then does not look like it's a hairstyle. It looks more like I'm Hagrid from Harry Potter. Potter, Harry Potter. So I do not like having layers. It just didn't work on me, you know, and then you kind of have to keep cutting and cutting and it's just, no. So now I have a straight cut hair, which I find works the best for me because I can equally wear hair curly and I can wear it straight. And when I wear it curly, it's heavy enough to actually, um, to create that kind of, you know, like straight but curly but like heavy look so it's not too fluffy because my hair is very thick i think that it just doesn't work having like imagine me having like layer here and then layer here it would just be so big here and so thin at the bottom which would make an illusion that my hair is actually shorter than it is or even more damaged you know like because the ends would look like so fine and this would look so puffy so i suppose that the layers are actually better for people who do not have much volume because it would create the volume illusion that's when it comes to cut when it comes to the color what i ask so i used to have like a uniform hair color which was quite dark i liked having dark hair and i had dark hair for around two years because i really enjoyed not having to do the highlights, not having to do the color, not having to do treatment more than once or twice a year. I would color my hair maybe in February and in September with like a simple like a dye number four. That was my old color. Honestly, it was great because it was low maintenance and uh, it had like a really nice shine, the hair, because of the dye. But also it was very similar to my natural hair color. But also it didn't damage my hair because... I found it that highlighting and the bleaching and lightening was probably a little bit more damaging. So for two years I was growing the hair and now my hair is very, like the longest it's been. As you can see, it's like here. And honestly, like I cannot tell you how happy I am with my hair. So when I arrived in Paris, I wanted to change something up with my hair. They say when like girls start like making many changes in the life, like they cut the hair, they like whatever change the home, it means they're ready for like another thing in their life. I'm not sure, but I like had this idea that I want to do something different to my hair. And I searched high and low for a good hairdresser. I asked a lot, a lot of girls about the right hairdresser and French are not very happy to share. Usually the, they always say like, oh, did you? But no, it's a natural, it's a natural. So I found Louis Remy hair on Instagram and this is not sponsored, it's just a genuine thing. I saw his work and I liked how natural it was. Um, Louis does hair for many like fashion kind of people, Louis and Remy both, they do like uh, creative directors of big houses. They are like very into fashion. So I knew that I was not gonna end up leaving with like spaghetti, like strap hair which is not a cute look so uh, when he came he said okay i'm gonna do a very very light balayage like small not light as in lightness but tiny bit of balayage and when he left my hair looked exactly the same as when he arrived but i said i love it because i can see what is happening like i could see the light 
that when it hits, you can see it. And he said, Tamara, please, like, you're, like you know, you, you have to understand that this is what it looks like now because I want it to last longer and be like a cooler toned. I have a lot of red pigment, but with the time, your hair, as you wash it, you will ha get kind of um, more and more light streaks through it as what you can see now. Now, keep in mind, I have a lot of red pigment, like my hair is basically red. The last time that I went light was like, eight, seven, eight years ago, and basically ended up being ginger. Nothing wrong with being ginger, but I don't think it suits me. And for that reason, I did never want to go light again because of the red pigment. She told me that I have to use every other time the blue shampoo. I bought the conditioner from Christopher Bond that I actually love. I actually prefer the one for the blondes than I do the ones for the cool brunettes because the one for cool brunettes, it actually has a bit of pigment that makes my hair look a little bit darker. It's cooler, but um, I prefer the one for blondes. So that's it with the hair. I then, he told me like two months later, he will come after initial treatment. He will come to put like a little bit of a toner just to make it cooler. So to always keep it cool and to not get red. So we will not do highlights, but around June, I will want to add a few more highlights closer to the face to just add a bit of light to the face like here and here. And that's it. Like will not be touching anything anymore. Another question that I got a lot when I featured my picture from Milan was what do you ask when you go to the hairdresser? What do you ask for to get this blow dry? And okay, there's like a few things. I am pretty simple when it comes to hair. Like I said, I don't demand too much. But when it comes to blow dries, I'm very specific. I want to keep the length. So I don't want to get those curls that kind of curl up here, you know, I want to keep the length, but I do not want any of those like spiral curls. Sometimes I know this can be a little bit rude maybe, but I, I kind of say like, I do not want to look like I just came out of reality show because I often see that, and it's not an ugly thing. Some people like it, but I often see that the reality stars have those like curls that look like this, you know, and then there's like 10 of them and that's the hair look. I don't want to look like that. I want to have this kind of natural curl look, which usually can be achieved with a clamp, like clamping of the curling tongue. And um, yeah, that's basically it or with the brush or with like a bit of a curler. I love using the um, Dyson Air Wrap, like really love using it. I love using my Dyson Corral. I did a tutorial how to use it. And my Supersonic from Dyson is the hair dryer that we use in my house in England and in Paris because I think it's the best for not putting a lot of heat on your hair. Now, I have this responsibility of always having to look relatively good and acceptable because otherwise, of course, people think like, why do you even film yourself if you don't look good? Blah, blah, blah. But uh, I don't want to apply too much heat on my hair because I want to protect it and I want to grow it and I want to keep it long. So I really believe that Dyson um, products are great for that. I have done a whole video on how I use them, on which hair care products I use and on which supplements I use. So you can have a look at that. I do change up my supplements, but I do believe that combining B7, B5 is important. Um, Taking a lot of supplements, vitamins, and in general is something that I believe is very important for healthy skin and hair and nails, of course. I realized that when I spoke about everything that I have done on my face, I forgot to mention the eyebrows. Now, you guys know that I have had a microblading done on my eyebrows by Nez Hassan. Nez is amazing. I know that now is the trend that everybody is actually removing the eyebrows, like lasering them off. I never wanted to do that because I honestly, honestly love the job that she has done. I've done it like two or three years ago now and I'm very happy. So that is it. When I do my uh, lamination in this video later on, you will see how it all looks once, once. It's all nice. I do have a scar in here which cannot be filled. It's from chicken pox. I had chicken pox when I was 22 or something like that. Fabulous. Just, just marvelous you know it's very important to do a good research before you go to anybody research 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 but also ask people that you know you know ask people from the experience don't just you know blindly go to trendy or popular places because that's not the point 
I think I've kind of now covered everything, everything else, you know. You know that I have had a nose job, that's, I've also mentioned it in so many other videos, it's not a secret. I can even dedicate a video about things like this, but I don't think it's very interesting as a topic. And then the last thing that I have left to talk to you about is manicure and pedicure situation. So perhaps it's not the best time to show you my nails because they're totally ready to be redone, but I always, always, always have the same thing. I can't remember actually when was the last time that I went. I think it's more than two weeks now, so I really am due a refill. I always ask for the same thing. I always ask for the gel polish. I go for either OP bubble bath and here they call it baby boom when I don't know how to actually describe it but if you look at the nail it starts with a light pink at the bottom and then at the top it's kind of like an ombre effect in France they call it baby boom I don't know if that's what it's called everywhere else in the world but I ask them to follow my natural shape of the nail which is kind of almondy I never have the corners of the nails even though I used to really really want to have like square nails I just naturally don't have square nails that's the thing on my hands I lose the corners always because my nails are pretty embedded in the finger if you have a look the, the skin is all around, you see, the nail, so it's quite, it is what it is, that's how it is by the nature. So I always ask them to follow the shape of the nail naturally, to keep the natural length, and this is like probably the longest my nails ever are, I don't go longer than this because I can't handle it. So I go for OPI bubble bath, for CND Naked Naivet, or CND Romantique, or for just any other opaque pink, light pink, natural nude. Uh, when it comes to normal nail polishes that are not gel, I like to use the most OPI uh, Be There in a Prosecco and OPI Tiramisu for two. Those two colors are amazing, amazing. Also Bubble Bath and Sweetheart, I love very much. Chanel Ballerina with the Chanel base coat, I love that combination. Like that's my maybe favorite of all combinations. I will link Chanel Ballerina below because I think it's a nail polish that you have to check out. It's so beautiful. Never wear red. I never wear black. I never wear anything dark. I used to when I was in university. I used to really experiment with the nail colors and I just find it that it doesn't look really nice on my hands. I don't have the most like elegant... <laughs> my boyfriend once said to me I said to him like you know I don't really have pretty hands and he said well I mean it's not like you don't really look like a pianist let's just put it that way yeah I don't have the most elegant hands so I think that what I can do with that is actually have elegant nails so that it can look better um, the same time last time that I went to for a manicure I asked for the same thing but I said can we have the tip like a French tip a very thin black to make it look a little bit more cool and then I changed my mind last minute I was like no 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 actually I can't do it I saw a picture on their Instagram and I thought it looked really elegant and beautiful but in the end I didn't go for it so so yeah that's what I always ask when I go for a nail place I sometimes when my nails are a little bit weaker ask for a gel on the base under the gel nail polish but I don't do that often because I don't like when the nails look thick or like curvy it's just not my thing at all I like when the nails look natural clean and elegant that is kind of my mantra for the manicures in my experience i love the russian manicure the most because they really clear clean the cuticles very well when it comes to pedicure i have pedicure at least once per month even during the winter months this is a question i often ask get asked do i get my pedicure in the winter months of course because I sometimes during the winter go to warmer places due to my job, I have to wear sandals, February is a red carpet season, you know, it's like January is a haute couture, you know, you have to like, we go to so many fittings, so many dressings, so many shoots, imagine coming with nasty feet. Anybody should and can do whatever they want, but I don't think for me it would be very acceptable, like taken as like, you know, it would be taken as like a bad thing. And I always have a straight shape on my toes with like short i don't really like long toenails this is i don't understand i know that some people really like this but it's not my thing so i always have a straight cut toenails with a same color as on my hands kind of nude but always opaque i don't like when it's not opaque on the toenails the only thing left now is to tell you all about how i do my own uh, eyebrow and lash lamination which of course i will do 
um, as soon as I get home. I think I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning so that I can include it in this video and just show you detail by detail. Okay guys, we're back home because I actually wanted today to show you how I do my eyebrow lamination. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, of course, I'm not a specialist in this. I actually always had this professionally done in England and I really like the effects and I do think that people at salons know the best to do this job. Like they know way, way, way better than I do. But most places have the salons closed and a lot of girls are like, okay, I still want to look pretty, but I don't know how to. And especially when it comes to lamination, because it's close to your eye, it can be kind of dangerous to do it yourself. So if you're not very good at this, um, I wouldn't really suggest experimenting, just, you know, it's probably always best to pay a specialist to do these things for you. Because I have very coarse and curly eyebrows that don't want to stand up. You know how people say like, oh, just calm them upwards. No, mine go like this. So yeah, and <laughs> definitely not, uh, not getting that look that I want. Another thing is that I would like to say, I have been getting so many questions about the lamination. I once posted a funny story saying like, when the boyfriend is not at home, the stuff that us girls do. I always do the most weird like beauty treatments when my boyfriend is not around because obviously like he doesn't need to see all of that, right? I actually have this kit over here, which I don't have the lid off uh, for. It's just for actually lash uh, lift because you have the lift pads and so on. But I before that had a kit that Nez uses, Nez who did my eyebrows and that was incredible and I kept the glue from that because I thought the glue from that was actually a little bit better, so yeah. So first you need to use the glue. Like this is not a tutorial, this is just me kind of showing you how I do it and then what kind of result I get. For me, the result that I get is my kind of desired result, to be honest. And also one more thing that you will need is cling film which is prepared. So now we need to comb the brows upwards. This glue really is making them kind of feel very sticky and so on. And here you can see how curly my eyebrows are, so yeah. This is not the look I'm going for, just to be clear. So this one is kind of glued. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in the meanwhile, I'm actually gonna perm it just so not to waste time. And th there's this solution here that it says perm. Kit comes with one of these thingies. And what I also do is I prepare this little thing. Now on a chemistry level, this is very simple. All you have to make sure is that nothing gets into your eye. Uh, but on a chemistry level, if you keep the perm on for the like 10 to 12 minutes as it's advised, you will be fine. There is no issues. So I just prepared a little piece of cling. And now I'm gonna paint it onto the eyebrow, just as such. Very easy. By making sure that everything, everything, everything gets on there. It's so weird because the way my eyebrows grow, I only see when I do this. And they're always shorter at the front and then they get thicker. I have no idea why that is. And then what I do, it's not going to look very glamorous. You can even do it like this. But I needed the other eyebrow free because while well, this one is peaking. Like I said, not the most glamorous look ever, but I put on my alarm that while this is baking, stopwatch, start, 10 minutes. And never looks better, right? Yeah, I know, lol. So we are done now with the perm. My time has expired for the first brow. This one is four minutes behind, which is perfect because the next step is going to be fixation, which kind of neutralizes the perm and sets it all in place. So we're gonna do that now. Ready? Take one off. Same thing, you dip in the little tool and you are applying everywhere where you applied the perm. I immediately noticed that my brows are much softer after this. Like, I mean, you can see, I can see it because when you have coarse brows, you know that they don't really move much. But after this, like, I can see that they're like soft. Again, I needed this. This time I did a bit of a better job. and apply. Cling film just sticks to the skin, so it's all fine. 
And that's basically the step number two, and I'm gonna do the same on the other eyebrow. If you decide to do this, make sure to always read the instruction on the box how many minutes to keep it on. And that's pretty much it. I Now the third step is kind of nutrition, where you apply the oil to the eyebrows, but because I kind of like keep my eyebrows always very nourished and I apply oils regularly, I always skip that step. Okay, it's time to take off this one. So I wanted to show you, just keeping an eye on the stopwatch. So I did this off, right? Like I told you. I skipped number three, which is nutrition, because I just don't really see much point in it. Um, and then I go for the cleansing solution. Cleansing solution is here. That's the next one. And let me tell you, because there's a lot of glue, it's not the easiest thing to clean. And you need to keep the eyebrows or the lashes, both applies for both, dry for 24 hours. You need to keep them dry. So, you know, you need to clean this off and that's what you need to count on as your best tip, like to kind of, you know, maintain them. Okay, that's it. The process is done in 25 minutes. All done. I just use a clean spoolie now to kind of show you how I can like, you know, move my eyebrows so much easier. Like, you know, which obviously is not like what I like to do now. The result I like to achieve is kind of more like this. And for me, a lot of people ask me like, but why do you do this? Like, why do you laminate your eyebrows? They always look so bushy. Actually, that's not the truth. It's just for me, they're more manageable, so I can move them wherever I want, and I always move them down like this, but when I have a gap, like I have a gap here, what I like to do is because my eyebrows are more manageable and they stay in place, I cover it up, you know, so that's what I like to use the lamination for. I don't use the lamination to wear the eyebrows like this that's not the point nobody like should i mean anybody can should do whatever they want but you know what i mean so i just use it to make sure that they look thick and nice and healthy and this is how i wear them basically so now that we have done this as you can see i'm going to do the eyelashes because it's basically the same principle um, hopefully we'll be able to insert before and after so you can see at the moment I have very long 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 lashes but they stick in clusters can you see so I had an advice from a lovely lady that does professionally LDL the last time I did it myself she DM'd me to say the best thing to do is actually to separate them even more as you're curling them so let's try to do that I have to be very careful obviously not to get anything in my eyes so hopefully I'll be able to show you but I'll basically talk you through it. First we have lift pads. There is like a lot of them in the kit and they come in different sizes, small, medium, large, depending on what kind of lift you want. And normally I go for medium lift, but at the moment my lashes are so long that I need a large lift because if they don't curl a lot, um, they will be hitting my thing. I mean, problem, good problem to have. So I took out already two thingies that are actually going to be glued soon. So what you need to do, I'm gonna use the, actually the glue that came in the kit because that's the glue that I suppose is also designed with these lift pads. You need to apply the glue on the back of the thing. It's very easy, but sometimes it's not that sticky, people say. That's what I've had. had. This is the part where I said, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna be able to show you the camera. The glue is kind of stinky. I always let it dry a little bit because that way glue sticks better, you know? This is actually the trickiest part of the lift, if you ask me, because you need to make sure that you have space to lift the lashes, you know? It should not sit too close on top of the lashes, but when I sent my sister a picture of me with this, she said I look like I got beaten up. I hold it a little bit to make sure that everything is fine. A lot of people stick down the lower lashes because they don't want to stick one to another. But to be honest, I never had the case of lower lashes sticking on. Now, when it comes to lashes, I always do one eye at a time because I don't want to be like having something on both of my eyes. Now I'm going to use the glue again that just splattered on the, on the tissue on the table. 
And what you need to do is glue them to this little thing. Now this is a job, right? And a lot of people also say, oh, but this doesn't stick. Yeah, it's true. So what you do is first you start like kind of doing this, like I'm doing it. And then you can use the help of your finger in case it doesn't work. I actually love doing things like this at home. I'm gonna try do this with the camera on, but then I will also do a good part of the job with no camera on because I think it's quite important. My lashes go thicker and thicker and thicker outwards, so I have to make sure to divide them even more outwards. So from solution, like in the lash, in the brow lamination, and slowly but very carefully, make sure to be very careful, don't take too much liquid, take as much as you can handle, not more than that. Focus on the root, on the lift. So this is it guys, I'm not gonna be very long talking about this because all you need to do now is put the foil over your eye so it heats up, keep for 10 minutes, then do the same with the fixation, 10 minutes, same thing with the brow process, clean up, and keep dry for 24 hours and that is it i'm not gonna bore you with the whole process what i'm gonna do instead i will show you uh, the results because you have already seen the process a super quick demonstration i've cleaned the glue of this eye it's still a little bit sticky because it's very hard to remove all of it but this eye i'm yet to kind of like de-glue but you can kind of see the results on it i need to um clean it the final rubber part you remove very easily okay guys sorry about all the back and forth uh the battery died but you have seen the process so i haven't actually managed to clean exactly all the residue from the lashes but look at this if you actually compare before and after of what my lashes look like and what they looked like i think the results are pretty insane because right now i'm not wearing mascara and when i have the lvl and i put mascara on which i will do tomorrow the lashes are just insane they're lifted they're thick they're long it looks amazing also when i do makeup on the eyebrows which i can't do now because obviously i've just done the lvl lift like an hour ago but when i do the makeup the really like results are incredible so I'm, I'm gonna end this video because i think this is going to be like a one hour long video which is way too long but if you have any other questions about the beauty treatments about anything feel free to ask because perhaps maybe there is something that i haven't responded so i can do like a beauty chat video and respond to all of your questions thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon bye guys